Dehumidifiers, such as the one I have here, have become an essential appliance in many homes and businesses across the world. They're often used in semi-conditioned spaces such as garages or basements where there's enough moisture present in the air to create really complicating problems with mold, mildew, or wood rot. They're really a neat box. You put electricity in one end and water comes out the other. Let's dig in a little bit further today and learn how they work at a more technical level. All the components in a dehumidifier are pretty much exactly the same as the components in a window mounted air conditioner unit. So let's start by taking a look at basically how that system works. Appliances such as refrigerators, freezers, air conditioners, and in this case dehumidifiers, all use what's called the refrigeration cycle. The refrigeration cycle goes something like this. It starts with a compressor at the bottom, which moves a substance called a refrigerant. And that refrigerant changes forms from gas to liquid, depending on what part of the system it's in. So it pulls in room temperature refrigerant. Let's call that 80 degrees just for number's sake. And that refrigerant is a gas at this point. And it compresses it, and it's still a gas, but that compressing action really heats up that refrigerant. So at this point, let's say it's 200 degrees. We need to cool that down. So to do that, we need to run it through a coil. That's just a series of copper pipes snaked together with some fins to help dissipate some of that heat. And then in the case of a window air conditioning unit, there's a fan that sucks air in and blows air across those coils to cool them down. And that's sucking in outside air and blowing that air back outside. So our refrigerant is at the top of our coil now and it's really cooled down to probably, let's say 100 degrees. And by this point, it's converted into a liquid. Next, the refrigerant's gonna go what's through what's called our metering orifice. Just have kind of a funnel here to demonstrate that. Metering orifice. Now, just like a spray bottle converts a liquid into a mist when you squeeze the trigger, the same thing is gonna happen through that metering orifice. There's kind of a nozzle there that when that liquid refrigerant goes through that metering orifice, it mists out in the form of a gas. And in the same way that the effect of compressing the refrigerant heats it up, evaporating the liquid through this nozzle cools it down. Liquid going in at 100 will ultimately come out at, let's say, 20 degrees. Now we really have the cool effect that we need for whatever we're trying to accomplish here. And then let's say window air conditioner unit, same thing, it sucks room air in and blows that room temperature air across the coils, cools down that air, in effect cooling down the room. And these two systems are divided. Just draw a line down through there. This is the outside uh, coil and side of the system, and this is the inside. If we think about how this works in the case of a dehumidifier, these fans are gone this division is gone, got a lot of squiggly lines here, but these two coils are in fact right beside each other. There's a fan either on this side or maybe on this side pulling through and it just sucks air across both coils at once. It hits the cold coil first and at which point uh, just like water vapor condenses out of the air on a cold water bottle on a hot human day, that water vapor condenses out of the air when it hits this cold coil and drops out and goes down into our catch bucket. That air then continues on across to the hot coil, warming that air back up. And essentially the air that comes out of the dehumidifier is the same temperature as the air that went in, but now we have the water caught in a pan. Let's go over the dehumidifier and look at how that works actually on the machine. To start with, we have our compressor at the bottom of the unit. This particular compressor is all self-contained and sealed up. There's a motor in there that actually drives a compressor head. There are some temperature protection limits, uh, sensor switches built in there, and there are some devices to keep the unit from sucking in liquid refrigerant. It only does gas and it'll uh, self-destruct if it sucks in any liquid refrigerant. Looking at the side here, we can see our two coils. There's the cold, low pressure side, and the hot high pressure side that, as we said, in a window air conditioner unit, these would be a foot and a half apart with two different fan systems. In this unit, they're all together because it's a dehumidifier. Looking at the front of the coils, you can see these horizontal lines and those are just copper pipes. And you can see the ends of them sticking out and they just snake through here to make the coil. 
That coil then has these aluminum fins on it, which essentially just increase the surface area to uh, make more contact with the air and transfer energy more effectively. Looking at the end of the unit, we look at this long skinny copper tube coiled up here, and that is our metering orifice. Uh, this particular variety is called a capillary tube. It's just a really long, really skinny tube that accepts the warm high pressure liquid uh, out of the condenser coil and runs through that tube. And by the time it gets to the other end and comes out into our evaporator coil, it's misting out at a really low temperature. That misting action, uh, that evaporation effect makes that low temperature. Then that uh, coolant or refrigerant rather uh, flows through this coil and makes this coil really cold. And then as that moist air hits that coil, the moisture drops out into our catch pan and then we can go you know, dump it out. A couple caveats here. As this uh, evaporator coil is cooled down, this temperature is far below freezing. And oftentimes what happens is if the air is moist enough, that moisture will drop out uh, and, and collect on here as frost. So uh, you can see sometimes if this coil frosts up, that, that frost actually follows the line, the path of this coil snaking through here until it gets about a third of the way up, at which point there's a sensor here that, uh, that recognizes that the evaporator coil is getting too cold and it calls for the compressor to shut off. At that point, the fan keeps running so it can suck warm uh, or room temperature air across the coil and melt that frost away. That's a normal part of the process. Uh, it's designed into the system to work like that, uh, to, keep that uh, to keep the whole system running efficiently. If it let frost build up the whole way, it would just clog the coil, no air could get through, and it would just run and kind of self-destruct over time. One last component essential to any dehumidifier is a little sensor here that actually measures the humidity in the room. That information then goes back to the computer mounted on top of the machine here to tell the dehumidifier whether to kick on or off or stand by or you know what to do. Typically a machine like this is going to have a range of uh, either side of the set point, whatever you have the computer set at. So say we want to keep about 50% relative humidity in the room. Typically the machine is going to let that humidity drift up to say 52% before it kicks on and then it's going to run till the uh, humidity is down to 48% before it kicks off. Typically a machine, whether it's a dehumidifier maintaining a humidity level or a refrigerator or air conditioner maintaining a temperature, typically it doesn't hold right at an exact temperature. It operates within a range. Otherwise it would be kicking on and off all the time and it would just wear itself out. As you get into more expensive units uh, with any type of equipment, uh, you can hold a tighter tolerance and a tighter range. But for the average consumer, the expense of those uh, machines is just not worth it. I mentioned earlier that there's no significant change in the temperature of the air coming into the unit as opposed to going out because the cold and the hot coils cancel each other out, which is true with one caveat. The compressor down at the bottom of the unit here takes a lot of electricity and a lot of energy to make all that refrigerant flow through the system. And the byproduct of that is some efficiency lost through heat. So this compressor does put out a fair amount of heat. You might not feel it up top, but down on the bottom, it's putting it out. If this explanation has been helpful, I invite you to hit subscribe and tap the bell to learn more about how stuff works and how to fix it when it doesn't. We'll see you next time.